this final video, we'll just touch on some of the alternatives that you can use to value an enterprise, particularly if some of the ones that, like discount, discount rates and comparables, uh, don't seem to apply. Because those generally will give you a higher valuation than the ones I'm going to describe now, because it's a going concern with reasonable certainty you're going to drive off some positive cash flows going forward if all goes well but not necessarily that you'll be able to drive positive cash flow um, as things uh, continue. So in this lecture we'll just talk about some other things that uh, professionals might use. For example, if a company has purchased a lot of equipment or services or whatever, there may be a multiple of assets. Maybe there's no revenue yet, but you're doing you're developing some new solar technology, you have a tremendous amount of equipment, you have a tremendous laboratory expenses, you have a lot of tests going on, um, you, haven't had, you have no revenue, you have no sales, and you're, you're trying to figure out to get more investment. You don't really have a plan because you don't know whether or not it's going to work, but, it, but, you have, but the technology itself is promising. Um, someone might give you a multiple of assets. You need more money. You've been working for years. You have $3 million worth of equipment. Um, and they're going to buy in with giving you another million dollars. How much of the business do they own? They may say, we'll value your business at 50% of your current assets. That would be $1.5 million. So the extra million we're going to give you will take 40% of your company, something like that. Right? That's another approach. There's also intangible assets, which we mentioned a little bit in, in the very first video, or the second one, where we talked about um, like patents and the like, intellectual property. And there's calculations that could be made um, with respect to um, how much uh, patents are worth based upon their option value. These get a little more arcane, and professionals get involved in doing these kinds of values. Um, you might value having an access to, like if you have property that has a rare earth elements or something like lithium for making lithium batteries, um, there's potential value in being able to mine that going forward, right? So you might value that in terms of its value, its option value. If that market develops, then you could take advantage of it, but it's not certain. And these are a little bit more technical in terms of how they're, they're done. The, um, these can be used for a liquidation process as well. You've been working on your business for five or six years. You got a couple million dollars worth of assets, perhaps, including, but you also have a lot of liabilities from the banks, and you want to get out and sell to someone else. Um, but you don't have a going forward business, and sometimes people will say, "Well, we'll buy your receivables, we'll buy your inventory, we'll buy your equipment at fifty cents on the dollar, which is a 0.5 multiple of assets." Um, that sort of thing. It's another way to be to think about your valuation. So not all value is done. Not all valuation is done by looking at your business plan and your going forward view. Sometimes um, it's done to get out as much value as you possibly can. Um, businesses are often valued and liquidated in this way or merged with another company. And how many shares do the investors of the company that's being merged? For example, the solar example I was giving you. Another larger company, um, Solar One, might say, "We'll buy, we'll buy your assets from you at 50 cents on the dollar," and they integrate everything into the business. And the investors in the old company get some money back, although not what they might have hoped for or expected. So this is also some of the valuation techniques. One of the things I want to close with is the importance, not just for entrepreneurship, but also for all new activity that is counting on future returns including, I would add, for example, your personal career growth. All of those future things, discounted cash flow, the model of free cash flows over time, and discounting them back to the present based upon the risk in what you're choosing to do, this is the primary way that value is ascertained, discovered, and explored in the business environment, in the investment environment. Never let the fact that all these other possibilities exist get in the way of realizing that this is the way it's thought about and this is the way it's done. These other approaches are, are trying to get at some of the uncertainties and the risks in forecasting all this information, but it all, underlying it all is this notion 
that, that investment grows in value over time because of feedback mechanisms, and the risk associated with the possibilities going forward determine the amount of return people expect to be getting, and that's all captured in this discounted cash flow thought process. One of the most important, probably the single most important concept for investing in businesses and participating in businesses going forward, the capital view of business. With that, I'll close on this discussion of valuation. And we'll, what you can do is look at your business plans and think about your business plans in the context of how valuable they will be in five years and therefore how valuable they are today when you take into account discounting the risk. And I think you'll find that there's a lot of reward in realizing the amount of value that you have been able to actually create, not, not pretend to create, but actually create by doing all this thinking and all this work and building your business plans.